God does not play dice. Movie day! Today, we're reviewing Oppenheimer. Hello, welcome back to Movie Day, the day where we talk about movies. I'm your host, Tremaine Hayho. God Does Not Play Dice relates to Einstein's reaction to the part of nature described by quantum mechanics, which is undoubtedly one of the pillars of modern physics. He felt that natural laws could not be like the throw of dice with inherent randomness or probability. I agree. It's also a line in Oppenheimer, written and directed by Christopher Nolan and stars Killian Murphy, Matt Damon, Emily Blunt, Robert Downey Jr., Florence Pugh, and a huge barrage of A-list actors at the top of their game. The film Oppenheimer tells the story of J. Robert Oppenheimer, the physicist who led the Manhattan Project, the U.S. effort to develop the atomic bomb during World War II. The film follows Oppenheimer from his early days as a student at Harvard University to his work on the Manhattan Project and his eventual fall from grace after the war. The film begins with Oppenheimer as a young man struggling with his faith and place in the world. He's drawn to physics, but he is also troubled by the potential for science to be used for destructive purposes. When the United States enters World War II, Oppenheimer is recruited by General Leslie Groves, played by Matt Damon, to lead the Manhattan Project. Under Oppenheimer's leadership, the Manhattan Project makes rapid progress. The scientists at Los Alamos, New Mexico, develop the atomic bomb in record time. The bomb is tested in the desert in July 1945, and it is used against Japan just days later. The use of the atomic bomb brings Oppenheimer great personal turmoil. He is haunted by the knowledge that he has helped create a weapon of mass destruction. He also becomes increasingly concerned about the future of nuclear weapons, and he speaks out against proliferation. In 1954, Oppenheimer is called before a Senate committee to testify about his past associations with communists. He's accused of being a security risk, and his security clearance is revoked. Oppenheimer is devastated by this, and he spends the rest of his life trying to come to terms with his role in the development of the atomic bomb. The film Oppenheimer is a complex and thought-provoking portrait of a man who is both brilliant and flawed. It is a film that explores the moral and ethical implications of scientific progress, and it asks important questions about the future of nuclear weapons. The film is beautifully shot, with stunning visuals that capture the grandeur of the desert and the power of the atomic bomb. The performances are all excellent, with Killian Murphy giving a tour de force performance as Oppenheimer. The film is thought-provoking and challenging, and it asks important important questions about the nature of science and the responsibility of scientists. If you are interested in history, science, or the atomic bomb, then you should definitely see the film Oppenheimer. It is a powerful and moving film that will stay with you long after you see it. If you don't like history, science, or the atomic bomb, you will probably be bored to tears waiting for something to actually happen, and when it finally does, don't worry, you still have at least an hour left of the movie. I saw the movie Oppenheimer in 70mm IMAX here in Sacramento, California with my friend Todd, who also stars in my latest movie, Simp, coming soon. This film is what happens when you give a filmmaker carte blanche. Christopher Nolan is a renowned visionary filmmaker known for The Dark Knight, Inception, Tenet, etc. Every scene in this movie is either in the middle of something or starts at the end of something. For example, Oppenheimer goes to see a professor and it's right when the professor just misses his class so the students are all walking out as Oppenheimer is walking in. The film is like a perpetual movie trailer where the stakes are always at a 10 and there's no real time to slow down and talk. In the few times that there are, when Oppenheimer is talking to Einstein by the lake, don't get settled in too quick because there is much more heightened dialogue to discuss right after. I can't exactly say I always knew what was going on in this film. I'd like to consider myself a sophisticated film goer and reviewer, but it was hard to keep up even for me. The film explores 40 years of Oppenheimer's life and imagine a highlight reel of 40 years happening in the span of three hours. Three hours seems like a long time, and it is, but when you take into consideration that it's 40 years of his life, it really isn't. That being said, I wanted this film to end at the two hour mark. And if it did end at that time, it would have been a perfect film. Instead, the movie goes on to be a courtroom drama that really is repetitive and gets old after a while. As talented as Nolan is as a filmmaker and as great as the performances everyone gives, it may have been better suited as a Netflix miniseries if he really wanted to delve deep into Oppenheimer's life. Instead, it's a three-hour-long epic that is absolutely exhausting to watch. I love going to the movies and being in the theater, but I did not love sitting there watching long depositions and courtroom dramas that is set in a very small, compact room. 
Overall, the film is definitely worth watching, but with the runtime being what it is, I may wait to watch it in the comfort of my own home, where you could pause it, go to the bathroom, have a few drinks, etc., etc. Nolan and everyone involved in the movie says it needs to be seen on the largest screen with the largest sound as humanly possible, but I actually disagree with that. It can be seen at home on your TV, and that may actually be a better experience. I couldn't wait to see the 70 millimeter projection on the big screen, and it was my first time experiencing IMAX down the street from me. But the film didn't fit the whole screen at all times. When it did, it looked great, but that was probably only 15% of the movie. I left not impressed by the IMAX format, as it is a dated format that has been overhyped for film aficionados. I watched this movie on a Wednesday morning, and the theater was packed. Now, I love the fact that people are dying to see a great film that isn't a superhero movie, that isn't a dumb, fluff, political propaganda piece like Barbie. It was a sophisticated audience that just simply wanted to see a great motion picture. I spoke with a few people after, and they weren't really impressed with the film as much either. It seems as if the hype was so high, it's so hard to live up to it. And the film did in a lot of ways, but it also didn't in many others. Overall, I am happy that Christopher Nolan exists, although I think the studio needs to bring the reins in on him a bit. This movie had the same problem that Bo is Afraid had, where Ari Aster was given carte blanche and therefore made a three hour long movie basically for himself. Fortunately for us, Nolan makes movies for audiences and he wants to put you in the middle of these situations and conversations that help change history. And it is important that people get to know who Oppenheimer was or at least get a glimpse of who he was. The fact that they couldn't rule out blowing up the entire world and that they still pushed the button anyway goes to show how far humanity will go, which seems to be way too far. Overall, it was a great film, as I cannot say it was a bad film, but the length of it goes against it as the point of the movie was pretty clear two hours in. Emily Blunt was a standout in her performance as Oppenheimer's wife, as he was her fourth husband at the age of 29, which is wild. Robert Downey Jr. gives probably the performance of his career. Kenneth Branagh is fantastic. Matt Damon is, well, Matt Damon, but he still fits the role really well. There was this Russian guy that looking at, I couldn't help but laugh, because I'm like, what is this guy's deal? As he was wearing makeup that made him look like he was in an emo boy band from 2005, but still stuck in the 50s. Florence Pugh is great as Oppenheimer's mistress that has a lot of deep personal problems. The film is rated R for graphic nudity, and I get why Nolan does that for the effect, but it wasn't really necessary. I feel like there could have been a version without the nudity that would have given the film a PG-13 rating and would have competed even better with Barbie. That's just me being a big time movie studio mogul. By the way guys, I opened up my Patreon, so please support the film studio on Patreon. It really helps me out big time. We have two documentaries in the works and we also have Simp coming out soon. And we also have a Bigfoot movie, so please stay tuned. And if and when you subscribe on Patreon, you will be the first to see these films. What was really interesting was that there wasn't a single preview at the theater. And we got there early and it kind of started, I think, a little bit late for when we got there. The movie just goes and just doesn't stop. It's like this nonstop highlight reel of a person's 40-year career. And it's just like, okay, all right, oh my gosh, all right. Well, scene after scene after scene after scene after scene. Every scene is either at the end of something happening or it's the beginning of something. It's like this artistic flow. There isn't like a really beginning, middle and end to each scene. Like we're getting portions and parts and segments of sections of him saying like two sentences. And then there's another scene. He's somewhere else in another classroom and he says three sentences. What was really interesting about everything in the movie was that everyone is talking about how great Oppenheimer is, how brilliant Oppenheimer is, and how much of a genius Oppenheimer is. But that being said, I didn't actually get that from this movie. Yes, he's talking in a while. Yes, he's looking and he's pointing at stuff and he's smoking cigarettes. But I never at once thought, oh my gosh, this guy is a brilliant mastermind planner. And I don't know what it was about that movie. I couldn't really put my finger on why he wasn't this esoteric figure, genius Albert Einstein type figure. As actually Albert Einstein, who was in the movie, was had a bigger and greater impact, I thought at least. So it didn't really make sense to me why this guy is such a genius. I never saw at any point of what he was. Oh my gosh, this guy like came to these crazy conclusions. It wasn't really like that. Most movies are you're keeping up as an audience. You're discovering things as the lead characters discovering things, but things are happening so fast and the time period is going so quick that it, you just can't really help but say like, okay, okay, well, all this stuff is happening. This is leading up 
to the Manhattan Project. This is leading up to this. I see where this is going, but it didn't actually stop to take a breath where it could have done that. There could have been a few times where it just stopped, slowed down, had some more intimate moments with the characters, but instead it was just one over the top conversation after the other, after the other, after the other, which becomes very exhausting to watch. It was like, Okay, all right, I get it. And I'm looking at my clock like, okay, it must be almost over. I looked at it, I'm like, we're only halfway there. We have an hour and a half more to go. And I watched, looked at my clock again. It, it just seemed, I, I didn't think that this movie would end. I thought that I would be trapped in the theater forever watching this freaking movie. That being said, like, I'm not saying it's a bad movie by any means. It's just a lot of talking, a lot of discussion, very long. But overall, I'm happy and glad that Christopher Nolan made this movie. It's a very important piece of history. I'm not as much of a history buff. I wasn't really as good at history personally and in school. I'm not great with names and dates and all that good stuff, but I love a good historical biopic. I love being transported in that time period. New Mexico looks great. The 1950s looks great. Oppenheimer's got the hat on and he's like walking around, you know, as a badass. And I love movies that are about a flawed character. He's kind of like this anti-hero. He's this genius, but he's a bit of a drinker and a fiend. Killian Murphy absolutely kills it in this part. It is a defining moment of his career. But funnily enough, I watched the movie In Time the other night, and it's a complete 180 from where he is. Killian plays a cop. He's basically the, the time cop. He's come a long way, and he's definitely got the gravitas on his eyes, his baby blue eyes. He's got, you know, <laughs> and... Robert Downey Jr., it's still obviously Robert Downey Jr., but he really molds himself into this performance. And actually, I was kind of rooting for Downey Jr. a lot of times than Oppenheimer because Downey Jr. seemed to have more logic in what he was saying and what he was doing. But it seemed like his character was a lot more jealous of Oppenheimer than anything. I feel like Emily Blunt was very fantastic with what she had, although she could have been in it a lot more, and I wish she wasn't in it a lot more. And I think the part of what Christopher Nolan was trying to say was that Oppenheimer was more about his work than he was about his family. You see that he has kids, the kids are in it very briefly. There's zero conversations with Oppenheimer and his children. There's none of that. And I guess Oppenheimer wasn't very present in his kid's life. So I think that's what Nolan was trying to say. He was all about the work. When you have a story about creating a nuclear bomb that could end humanity, you, had, you definitely feel the weight and the gravitas of the seriousness of the situation. So it's kind of hard with this because I'm not really, I'm going into spoilers, but if you know anything about the story, you know what happens, right? You know that he makes a bomb, you know, but this is like how it happens. But there's a really great point so spoiler alert, if you, if you want to wait, go a minute ahead of time. But there's a point in the movie that I really liked was right after they tested the bomb, they had a successful test. He talks to the general at the Manhattan Project. He's like, hey, you know, keep me the loop with everything. And then the general was like, why would I do that? It was almost like government just completely used Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer built this bomb for them. And then after they had this, they knew that they could do it. He was kind of of no use to them. And then he almost becomes the scapegoat at the end of like, he's the, now he's the bad guy. He could be the villain. He used to be a communist 30 years ago. You know, all these things that go against Oppenheimer where he did his best to, to do what he had to do. And he was an important piece of history that he was kind of used by the U.S. government. Pretty crazy time period. Pretty cool to be morphed into that time period. Although I will say I do think the film suffered with its runtime. If it was a two hour long movie, it would have been perfect. The movie could easily be an hour shorter. I rarely ever say that, especially films that are well made, well acted, well produced. It's almost like I don't want these movies to end. For this, it was kind of opposite. I feel like when once they dropped the bomb and you see that they just kind of used him and they left him, you could just end it right there and it would just be a perfect movie. But instead, it goes on for another 45 minutes to an hour and you get more courtroom drama where people are just repeating the same stuff over and over and over again. It's like, okay, we get the point. We get the point. Overall, though, Oppenheimer is definitely worth seeing, and I give it a 8 out of 10. Well done, Christopher Nolan. And what did you guys think? Did you guys see Oppenheimer? Let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of it. And please subscribe if you haven't already. My name's Tremaine Hayhoe. I am a film reviewer and film director, filmmaker. We've got more movies coming 
up. Subscribe on Patreon, support the channel, support the movie studio, and make every day a movie day.